It can sometimes be difficult to feel motivated as a solopreneur or if you're someone that's a one man or one woman business owner. Now it can feel like we have lots of things that distract us from focusing on the right things that really matter to us in our business. And it feels like it's hard to really get it all together and get everything done as a solo person in your business. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the four powerful ways that I have stayed motivated personally, lots of trial and error around this, but I've learned ways to really stay motivated in order to bring more creativity, more joy, and more excitement to really grow my business and thrive my way. Escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I am Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention strategist that specializes in helping passionate individuals to reinvent their work, to create meaningful businesses so that they can have the life that they want. So if you're new here, welcome to the channel and don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button to be the first to be notified every time a new video is released every single week. So today I want to talk a little bit about staying motivated as a solopreneur or as a one woman, one, wo one man business, uh, where you are kind of the solo asset of your business at the moment. And you might choose to stay this way. Uh, I definitely, uh, solopreneurship is a model that I very much love in order to be able to have more flexibility uh, and ease and simplicity in my business to have the life that I want. Uh, and very likely a lot of people that actually want to keep a very minimalist business where uh, they're not growing for growth sake, right? They're actually growing because it actually makes sense for the kind of business or the life that they want. Um, very likely want to remain strategically small to be able to have more time uh, and actually just have a simpler business to run in order to earn the income they need to live the life that they want. So I know that staying motivated as a solopreneur and someone who is solo in a business can be difficult when you feel like you're someone that might be doing all the things in order to keep your business just above your head above water, right? Or if you're growing to the next stage of your business, it can feel like a lot of work and a lot of things that you believe you have to do or other people that might have told you you have to do in order to get to the next level of your business. So the first powerful thing that has helped me to stay motivated and not feel so exhausted and stretched out too thin in my time, my effort, and my energy in order to just continue to really be motivated in my business is really focusing on simplicity and the essentials. Now, simpler said than done at times, right? As someone who is an overachiever, someone who is a recovering perfectionist, understanding what is essential and simple wasn't really part of my vocabulary. But I've had to learn that in order for me to build the kind of business I want to build, I have to learn how to focus and really have boundaries about what I am spending time and effort doing. So I want to ask you today, what are some of the non-essential activities you're currently spending on in your business that deep down inside you are starting to have a inclination or a feeling that it may not actually help you get to the goals that you want to get to, but it kind of just is something that looks good in your business or you feel obligated to do, but isn't actually either A, bring you joy to be, be doing it in your business, uh, or B, actually getting you closer to some of the goals that you have for your business. Now we all have lots of those things. So for example, I used to spend tons of time on social media thinking that, hey, if I didn't show up every single day, on my social channels like Instagram and Facebook, people would just forget about me. And the truth is that actually, when I focus on a platform that I can really connect better with the right people like YouTube uh, or my own blog, this is where I get actually the most traction for gathering leads for my business or even spending time on things like pitching on to be on media or podcasts or pitching to journalists to write an article around concepts that I believe in. Those activities brought me a lot more recognition, credibility, and an audience that really is ready for the work that I want uh, to create. And they buy a lot more often in that way. So you can really take a look at the sort of 80-20 rule, right? Like what is 20% of your activities that are really producing 80% of your results? At times, these are maybe no more than two to three things that are consistently being done in your business. Now, if you have 10, 15 things right now that's on your plate, if you don't know what those things are, start tracking them, start really seeing where your time's being spent. I did that for a whole month and was shocked at how much time I was just lingering on social media, not really getting anything done, but thinking I was actually really being productive. 
So I really make it a priority for me to do an 80-20 analysis on my business every month. Uh, and as a coach and a strategist, I know that there are a few essential activities that really matter to my business. So the first thing is actually education. Uh, a lot of what I love to do and why clients trust me is because I go on videos like this, I teach webinars, I do training workshops, I go on podcasts and reveal my frameworks and the processes I take my clients on, and I teach what I know. Right, and really share generously. And that's always been part of my value. And that's always part of why people end up hiring me uh, because they feel that there's an authenticity there and there is a bond and, and uh, trust that they've already built with me prior to even hiring me for the first time. So I know a lot of my time should be really focused on things like that, right? Instead of actually mm, find, you know, doing images and memes or quotes on Instagram you know, and wasting my time doing stuff I'm not good at and or isn't actually gonna affect my bottom line and really focus on educating and teaching what I know. The second thing I spend a lot of time uh, doing as an essential activity every week is building and maintaining relationships. Now, I'm a big advocate in uh, authenticity and genuine relationships in my business. I only wanna work with people that I actually get and they get me. Uh, so I'm not really looking for being super famous and you know being out there uh, connecting with thousands of people. I actually really love deep diving with intimate relationships and a lot more longer um, sort of conversations, right? And, and powerful conversations rather than um, something that's automated and less intimate, right? So I do a lot of my activities in reaching out to clients to actually check up on them, to ask for referrals, to actually check in on someone I worked with a year or two ago, you know, and see where we can keep growing together. Uh, or I reach out to partners that are like-minded in order for us to spread a common vision together. Now, all those activities I know uh, are going to absolutely be uh, what helps me to be successful because a they're in my personality and genius zone and the second thing is um, These are things I enjoy right and they have a huge impact in how people um, Really buy my services and are um, attached to my brand for those reasons So I can work my tail off every single day to do like a hundred different things But focusing on this 20% uh, really helps me to grow to move forward and really just keep my eyes on the prize For what's really important to move my business forward the second most powerful thing uh, that I have learned to stay motivated as a solopreneur is to really do less but better. Again, this is sort of something wasn't in my vocabulary a few years ago until I experienced a massive burnt out, burnout with my business uh, and had to reevaluate how do I just, I need to scale back and do things that matter. Uh, and doing less but better doesn't mean that you sacrifice quality or you sacrifice um, you know, the effort and, 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 and that good work that you really wanna be known for, right? And your brand really stand for. But it's really to be focusing on quality things, right? Not the sort of quantity-based metrics like how many people do I have on my email list or how many followers do I have my, uh, on my social media channels? Like none of those things actually equal to sales, uh, but also um, it's a vanity metric. It doesn't actually tell you uh, that your business is succeeding or that people are finding you appropriately or that they care about your work or resonate with your work, right? So quality is really the winner when it comes to even things like subscribers and traffic to your business um, because who really cares if you have 10,000 people in your email list but none of them are reading a sentence or none, none of them actually reach out and, and, and wanna work with you, right? It doesn't actually really matter. Um, so really chase, you know, quantity, uh, sorry, quality and not quantity, right? That might mean, and this is sort of shocking when people hear this about the way that I market, is that I tend to actually do phone calls with every single client before they come to my business. I have conversations even with people sometimes that are on the fence and I really genuinely give them almost a mini coaching session when they in, even just inquire about my services because I care about people and I think having, um, building relationships in that way, really not making it just always about the sale, right? And my meaningful connection style, right? Of uh, gaining credibility, building community. It's, you know, slow and steady. It's not really these huge numbers. I don't have a huge email list or a huge following, but a lot of the quality of work that I do, the people I tend to partner with, uh, where I'm featured and where I give value in interviews and podcasts or whatever that I do in terms of marketing, I do that really well and I do that really often, right? So that means I'm picking just certain platforms, certain marketing activities to do that. Um, do less, but better. And that has absolutely changed how the right quality customers find me and also how they keep being loyal to my brand and working with me uh, in more than one way. 
So if make if you spend an hour making meaningful connections by actually having real conversations with people and having, you know, that little mini coaching hour if you're a coach, right, or whatever you do, you give people your best. You're far ahead of people that have thousands of people on email lists, but no action is really happening in terms of conversion. The third most powerful way to stay motivated for me uh, in the last almost seven years of being a solopreneur uh, is always remember to link back to your why. It's just a reminder that I have for myself every single year when I lose track of things or I feel disconnected with what I'm doing in my business, which can happen, you know, when you get distracted by what other people are telling you is what you need, but you haven't taken the time to really ground yourself in what it is that you need in your business and how your business needs to fulfill you and keep you satisfied, right, to keep going and progressing to grow your business. So it can be really easy um, to get, you know, sort of information overload and experiencing a lot of comparison, right? And, and being an imposter when you've got so many uh, types of business owners and influencers and brand idols out there that you love, but may not sometimes be, you know, like some of the things that they do may not be something that you may want to do, or you might feel pressured to do it because you think every other solopreneur business or coaching business or whatever it is that you do has to be that way. So coming back to your purpose, like why you started your business, why you want to do the work you do, why does that matter to you, what benefits are you receiving, like we give a lot, you know, as service-based providers, we give a lot as purposeful business owners, and we forget to ask ourselves, what do we want to gain, what do we want to experience from the business we are currently building, uh, and what are we growing into that's really going to make things joyful for us in our career. So my purpose has always been to help people start meaningful businesses to build a life that they want, right? And I get really excited to really help people build that autonomy and earn a living in a way that aligns with their lifestyle choices. So everything links back to that why. So when I start to uh, think about, oh God, you know, someone, some other coach is offering this approach. Should I be thinking about that? Should I be doing stuff around that? You know, I always think back about, no, like if my ethos is helping people on a personal level to design things that are not cookie cutter, that are not a blueprint, you know, that are very tailored to the kind of business, their personality, their approach, their values, their lifestyle choices. I need to make sure every decision that I make in my business for courses, my programs, however, whatever it is that I offer really links back to that purpose without getting distracted by shiny objects. All right. The last piece, very powerful place that I have, um, you know, started doing this year a lot, uh, or actually we're in 2020. So all of 2019, I've been doing that, uh, as well is actually being, uh, to, to stay motivated in my own business. I've had to really look at ways to keep myself interested at times when you've been a solopreneur or a business owner for many years, things can feel a little dry, you know, or you feel like you're repeating a lot of the things that you used to do at year one. Uh, and you want to keep yourself interested in your own business. So I've been doing a lot more, uh, upskilling, learning aspects of being a better coach. Um, even learning things that don't link to act the actual work that I do, but could really benefit it. You know, for example, I'm doing a course right now on nonviolent communication in relationships with my partner, but that really absolutely translates to a lot of ways that I could be building relationships with my own clients, right? Relationships are pretty common across the board, no matter what kind they are. And so all those things keep me interested to integrate some new learnings into the way that I might approach helping my clients. So uh, that's one way of sort of adding more skills, adding more interest into things that you want to grow into and evolve your body of work into. And the bonus thing is if you're, if you're consciously learning things to really add in things into your business, you're really actually doing your, your clients a great service because they're constantly buying from someone that's always upping their game. Right. And that's always a really, really great thing. The second thing around that part B of uh, this powerful piece that keeps me motivated is to actually take the time to think about how you can stretch your creative muscle. And what I mean by that is that, yes, you're going to do a lot of the work in marketing your services and, um, you know, creating content and working with your customers. Right. But don't forget that there's could be parts of your business that you can really bring some humor, some personality, some of your, your character traits into things. Right. So if, for example, um, you want to spice up some of your marketing by actually doing something that interests you or you have passion doing, like let's say illustration. I've had uh, a client that where this example came from, she's an illustrator, like, you know, in her sort of like secondary passion, right. That she does on the side on weekends. 
And then she decided, you know what, I love to draw and I love to, you know, kind of express myself through illustration. And how can I use that towards my marketing that just doesn't feel like any other marketing way that I would do it. And so she started actually illustrating a lot of her thoughts in her social media channel. And that gave her brand a layer of interest, interesting edge, right? Uh, um, where people were attracted to her all of a sudden, uh, not just from the concepts that she provided, but really in the way that she deliver those concepts in an illustration. So you can really start to get creative uh, to maybe off do something in your business that kind of scratches the itch of a hidden talent or a gift that you had. And at times it doesn't even have to be things that you could do may not even need to be fully, fully related to your business, right? You can think uh, a little bit about, uh, let's say if you were thinking, you know, I want to start a podcast because that's something that has been on my mind. Uh, it's something that I want to do this year, right? And maybe the thought of doing a podcast just for your business topics kind of sound like ho-hum, like I already do this. Um, you might want to think about sort of like, um, like I, I think about content or topics that are like one degree of separation, other things that could be interesting that's related to your ethos and your philosophies. So for example, for me, I'm a huge minimalist advocate and a fan. Okay. I'm not a minimalist coach. I'm not someone that's a Marie Kondo, but I live uh, in the practices of a minimalist lifestyle person, right? So I would love to, for example, do a podcast just on sort of how I've designed a minimalist life in order to actually have more time and spaciousness and be a better human because of it, right? Uh, and it's nothing going to be doing with business. It could be something to do with, you know, just the kind of value that I would love to share with people, you know, and it's something that I practice in my life. Like that could be something that's quite creative. And the interesting thing apart about it, if you create something like that, you might actually really attract some really like-minded audience and a percentage of that audience that could listen to that podcast or watch that YouTube channel, whatever it is that you create, could end up being fil filtered into uh, being interested to be a client of your primary business as well. So whatever way you can choose to put some of your creativity into the current way you do things in your business, right? Whether it's your marketing or the way that you connect with clients or where you choose to do certain activities that you need to do things for in your business, think about your personality, think about other things that could make that activity fun again, uh, or push yourself and flex that creativity muscle uh, to enhance a hidden talent uh, that can um, really kind of help you stand apart and help you get interested to continue to do some of these activities in your business. All right, so um, I would love to hear from you if any of these four uh, powerful ways that I stayed motivated as a solopreneur resonated with you, and which is one that you might try out in your business that you're building uh, or are currently growing right now please share with me below and I would love to hear your comments. Thank you so very much for joining me for this week's episode. And again, everything that I film here is for you. So leave me a comment, uh, give me a topic suggestion that I can dedicate to you in the next video. Uh, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Ready to work for yourself, but have no idea where to begin. I'll show you how. Learn how to create a self-employment plan with work you can love with the Work Reinvented course. It's time to stop wondering if there's a bigger, more meaningful way to enjoy your life and work. There is.